If you have used diffusion models like a stable diffusion to generate an image, you might have noticed that sometimes there are some artifacts, like the mouse area doesn't look natural, or there is a car on the street that doesn't look like a car, and you might have wondered why. And the free U paper tries to answer it by having an analysis in the frequency domain and then tries to solve this issue without any training. So I hope you enjoy it and let's just see how it works. The paper first tries to investigate what happens in terms of changes when we generate images from noise during the noising process. As you can see, as we denoise it and reach the latest denoising steps at right, the low frequency information of the image doesn't change much, while we can clearly see a significant change in high frequency details. And they have further drawn this figure to show the changes, and at this figure, on the y-axis, it shows a difference of log amplitude, where the positive values show the cases where we have amplification and noise, and negative cases show where we have attenuation. The x values show different values of frequency in the frequency domain, where 0 to 2 pi is low frequency details like global structure and layout, and where we have a smooth color without any change and 2 pi until pi is high frequency details where we have significant changes like the edges in the generated image. The t equals 25 is the noisiest image like the capital T in the diffusion formula and t equals 0 is at the end of the diffusion where we have the ultimate generated image. On t equals 25 you can see we have the noise so we amplify the high frequency details but still when we look at the low frequency details, we don't amplify them much and even at the early denoising step where it looks like a pure noise, we still have some formation of the layout and the model doesn't amplify them much because that means the global structure of the image is changing and that reshapes the image essence. And as we denoise it and get closer to a step zero, we see that we always have attenuation in the frequency, but this attenuation is more for high frequency details and less for low frequency details. And once the others in this paper understood how the noising process works in terms of changes in frequency, they further extended their analysis to understand how the noiser backbone, that is UNET, works. The denoiser unit is made of a primary backbone network, made of an encoder and a decoder in addition to skip connections that transfer information between encoder and decoder. To understand the effect of primary backbone versus skip connection in the denoising process, they define two scaling factors, B and S, to control each branch. The B scale just multiplies the main backbone features by a scale, and S scale is used by first tuning the skip features into frequency domain using FFT and then scaling them by S and then turn it back using IFFT. The reason why they use FFT and IFFT for this skip feature branch is probably because of this figure. This is similar to previous figure I showed you, but at a particular time step of the diffusion. The orange one is for backbone and you see that the backbone features attenuate a lot at high frequency, while purple one for a skip connection doesn't attenuate much. So we can kinda conclude that the skip connections of the unit should contain the high frequency data since it doesn't attenuate much and backbone features are representative of low frequency features. And to visually show this, they use the sample where B and S are both one as if we use the denoiser of diffusion without any modification. And then they decrease the value of B to reach 0.6 and we can see as we decrease the value of B and the effect of primary backbone features, we see more noisier output because we emphasize more on skip connection features that should contain high frequency details, in this case noise. And as we increase the value of B, we see a result with a better quality, but at the cost of being too as smooth as we amplify the low frequency details. And they have also shown in this figure that as we increase the value of scale B, we have more attenuation in high frequency information. But on a scale S, when we change it, we don't see much of a difference except some tiny high frequency details that are modified like the edges on the arm or how the sand looks like. And then upon this analysis I showed you, they proposed FreeU as a method to enhance the quality without any training or fine tuning. All they try to propose is a way to make the scaling of B and S that I showed you before adaptive. The first thing is backbone factors, which has to scale the primary backbone blocks. For adaptively calculating it, they first compute an average that XLI represents the output of block L of the decoder and I is the index of the channel. So we grab the output of block L and then we take average over all the channels and store it in XL bar that if we visualize it, we can see that average feature map contains valuable structural information. 
Having this in hand, they define the scale factor for block L using this equation. And looking at the equation, they first normalize the average feature map to ensure that it is between 0 and 1, and then multiply by BL hyperparameter that is higher than 1 and has to scale it, and finally plus 1 to ensure that this alpha L for each pixel value is at least 1. And this equation, if you look carefully, it is adaptive because for the area that we have a structural information like edges of a squirrel or a balloon, we have higher values in the average feature map and we amplify those regions more than the others. But still they have seen that applying this scaling leads to an over smooth texture in the result. And to mitigate this issue, they proposed applying this scaling only to the first half of the channels instead of all, and this way the remaining half should still contain the high frequency information and we don't dampen them much, and as a result we can see that this simple solution resolves the issue. And the other one is skip factors that looks like the one I already told you by applying FFT and IFFT, but the difference that we have beta instead of a scale S. And the difference is that this beta scale value rescales only if the frequency value R is less than a threshold and attenuates them by replacing SL value that is lower than 1. And for all the others, it keeps it as 1. And visually looking at the effect, you can see that when we add this skip factor, we have more low level details. And that was all about this free view. I hope you enjoy it. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until the next video, goodbye.